Today we will start with lesson four, which is talking about factoring to solve quadratic equations. Now, as I told you in the previous lesson, we have two ways to solve quadratic equations. But if we have an x squared, or if b is ungiven, like if I have an x squared minus 4, x squared plus 25, x squared minus 9 equals 6, all of these equations now, there's no b. So for these two, for these two the types of equation, if there's no b, we can solve it by two ways. By graphing, if I have an graphing calculator, or by finding the square root. In this lesson now, we will learn how can we solve the quadratic equations, but if there's a b, like if I have an x squared minus 5x plus 10 as an example. What I have to do? How can I solve? How can I find the roots of the equation? In this lesson, we will learn how can we find the roots here. Now, we can solve the quadratic equations, including equations there with a b, by using the zero product property. What does it mean? That's mean here. If I told you now, oh, to solve it here, you have to do many steps. You have an equation, you will factorize the equation, and you find the solution. But before this, we must remember the property. Thus, we called it the zero product property. In this zero product here, all of us know that if you have a 3, 3 times 0. What is the, the product if you multiply 3 times 0? Zero? 0. Is it right? Yes. Yes, miss. And if you multiply 0 times negative 4, what you will get? 0. Also 0. So, zero. Zero. That's mean here. If you multiply two numbers and the answer is, is zero, so that's mean one of them is zero. If you multiply two numbers like four times yeah. zero, the product of them is zero. And if you multiply zero with two, the product also is zero. So if you multiplied any two numbers and the answer is zero, that means one of these two numbers is zero. Got that? Yes, teacher. If you multiply two numbers and the answer is zero, that means one of them is must be zero. Or must be zero, sorry. So, if A times B, the product of A times B equals zero, that means A, it could be zero, or B, it could be zero. Is it right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, teacher, I got confused. Here, look. And here. What do you mean by zero and zero? Yes, okay. Look here. If you have x times y equals zero, what does it mean? That's mean x times zero equals zero. And I mean, if you replace y with zero, you get zero. Or if you replace x with zero, you get zero. Okay. So that means yes. y it could be zero and x it could be zero. So if you multiply two numbers 
and you get zero, what does it mean? That means one of them is zero. Get that? Uh, got it. Yes. Okay. But Miss, what is what if it like how do you know if uh, it equals zero or no? If I told you no, it's equal zero. It must yeah, be. Yeah, but here problem one uh, forty plus one. Okay, wait, wait, wait. T minus two. Before, before how do you know that it's zero? Before, wait, wait, please. I'm talking about X times Y only. Now, okay. look at these two, these two factors now. 40 plus one times two minus, T minus two equals zero. Here, as I told you, if you have an X, times y equals zero. That means it could be x equals zero and it could be y equals zero. Here also, you have two factors. So these two factors, the 4t plus one, it could be zero and t minus one, it could be zero. Like here, x, it could be zero and y, it could be zero. Here. For you, these two factors that are, multiple, that are multiplied, 4t plus 1, it could be 0, and t minus 2, it could be 0. 4t minus 1, it could be 0, and t minus 2, it could be 0. Like x is 0 and y is 0. Here. 4t plus 1 is 0, and t minus 2 is equal to or equals 0. Then solve it, subtracting 1 from both sides. You have now a 4t equal 5, divide by 4, divide by 4. So t is 5 over 4. Or T minus two is zero. That's mean T equals two. Teacher? To find this one here, here you have two factors that are multiplied. If you multiply these two factors, that's mean one of them is zero. Or we multiply them and you get a zero. So one of them is zero. Which one? That is could be the first one and it could be the second one. If, it, if the first one is zero, so I have to find the value of t. How? 4t plus 1, subtract 1 from both sides. I have now an, um, sorry, what is 5 here? OK, OK, I made something wrong here. So it is 4t equal negative 1. So t is negative 1 over 4. So this is, this is now the value of t, which is negative 1 over 4. If you now evaluate it up, you get 0. Or I could also t minus 2 equal to 0, where is t equal to? So if you have now these two factors, which are equal of the product of them is equal to 0, that means one of them is 0. And teacher, one of the factor solution will be zero. Yes. Like here, two, t minus two, the factor equals zero. Or if I replace negative one over four by four. Exactly. Negative four, negative one over four times four, negative one, plus one, zero. Oh, okay. So in this okay. equation, we have two solutions. Yeah, okay. exactly. So now here you have two solutions. Negative 1 over 4 and 2. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah, we, we will solve more ex many examples to get it more clearly for you.
Let's see now these examples here. What are the solutions of each equation? The first one, x plus one times x minus five equals zero. Here now, the, these two factors are multiplied and the product is zero. So that's mean one of them is zero. It could be x plus one or it could be x minus five x plus 1, it could be 0, and x minus 5, it could be 0. Then, if x plus 1 equals 0, what is the value of x? You will subtract negative 1 from both sides, so you will find now that x is equal or equals negative 1. And, if x minus 5 equals 0, so x equals 5. So the two solutions here, that's x, it could be negative 1, and it could be 5. These are the two solutions for the first 1a. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes, miss. Yes. Look at yes. B now. In B, we have a 2x plus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0. Two factors that are multiplied, and the product is 0. So one of them is 0. It could be 2x plus 3, and it could be x minus 4. As I told you, one of them is 0. Now, 2x plus 3 equals 0. So what is the value of x? How do you find it? Minus say minus 3 minus 3. Then 2x equals negative 3. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So x is negative 3 over 2. Or x equals 4. So if x is negative 3 over 2, or if x is 0, both. So these are the two solutions for b. Get it? This is so, yes, so very important. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher. Let's do C now. 2y plus 1 times y plus 14 equals 0. So one of them is 0. Is it right? It could be 2y plus yes. 1, or it could be y plus 14. 2y plus 1, 0, or y plus 14 is 0. So what is the value of y in the first, in the first one? Did you can you read the question again? OK. Here in C, the first one a 2y plus 1 times y plus 14 equals 0. If you multiply them, you'll get zero. What does it mean? That's mean the first factor it could be zero, or the second factor, it will be zero. Is it right? Yes, teacher. Yes. Now then, minus one, minus one. So two y equal negative one. So y, be y equals negative 1 over 2. Exactly. Negative 1 over 2 is the value of y. For the second one, what is the value of y? 
Um, the negative second value is 40. Negative 40, thank you. These are the values of y that makes the product a zero. Let's do number D now. Seven and minus two times five and minus four equals zero. One of them is zero. Seven and minus two, it could be zero. Or five and minus four, it could be zero. The first one here, plus two, plus two. Seven n is equal to, so n is? N equal, um, divided by two over seven. Two over seven, is it right? Yes. 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 The second one, plus four, plus four. So, sorry. So five n is four. So n is n uh, equals four, four over five. five. Four over five. Thank you. So these are the two values of n. Two over seven, or two solutions I have. Two over seven and four over five, which are the solutions of D. Is it clear? Yes. yes. So this is now the first ideas. I, I first idea I want you to know from this design that if you have two factors, they are multiplied and the answer is zero. So one of them is zero. Don't forget, wallahi, these two lessons are very important. You must practice on them. You must learn how to do them because it's very important, especially also in SAT, as I told you yesterday. Now, here now, come back to solving the equation. I told you, if you have an x squared minus 9 without b, there's no b, there's no, nothing multiplying by x in the middle. Just isolate the number on the second side. Then you will say that x is positive, negative 3. This is if there's no b. But what about if there's a b? Like you have an, this one and this one here. And between them, you have a 6x. This 6x, this is a b. How can I solve it now? Can I use the graphing? Can I use the solving uh, uh, say by using the square root? No. There's a new way I must do it. So under square root cannot help me. What I have to do? To solve this type of equations that there is B, the first step, you have to factorize this expression. As we know before, here you have an x squared minus 6 equals 0. This one is an expression. If you make equals 0, this is now an equation. So how can I solve it now? It is an equation. So from its name, equation. That means I need to find a numbers or a variables that's equal. To, oh, I need to, uh, to find the, the, the number that is equal to variable. That means equation. So, okay, I need now to solve it. The first step, you need to factor the expression. How can I factorize it? Remember chapter 8. To factorize it here, as we remembered before, open two brackets, x here and x here. Now, make a table. Write the factors of, now, since I have a negative sign, so I, that means 
I have two signs that are different. One is positive and one is negative. Then nine, it is a three times a three. So, um, uh, this is something wrong here. Let's make it here. Um, plus nine. Okay, sorry, I went to change now. So give me the, the factors of nine. You will tell me it's a three times a three. And since they are plus, so I have here plus here and plus here. Two variables that are, if I multiply them, I get to three. And, and if I add them, I get six. It's three and three. Yeah, three. three. and three. Yes. Then after that now, I didn't find a solution. I just by now factored the expression. So this is the first step. The second step now, use the zero property. That we talked about them before. That's mean. If you have two factors and these two factors are multiplied. Okay, so what does it mean? That's mean one of the factor is zero. So it could be x plus 3 or x plus 3. If x plus 3 is 0, so what is the value of x? Equal negative. Negative 3, yes. yes three. And here also, it is also negative 3. Negative. So for this one here, you will say that there's only one equation which is equal or which is, which is uh, which uh, there's an x equals negative three. So if you have an equation like this one, and in this equation here, sorry, if you have an equation like this one, and you have a value of b, you cannot solve it by the square root. You must to do it to solve it by two steps. Factor expression, then use the zero property of multiplication. That's it. Factor, then solving, solving it by using the zero property. Let's have an example now. Look at this equation here. In this equation, we have an x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals zero. Here now, as I told you, you must factorize them, then use the zero property. Let's factorize them as we learned before. X, X, since we have a plus, so I have a plus here and a plus here. Then give me two numbers. Our two factors of 15 that if you add them, you uh, get 8. The factors of 15, it could be 5 and 3, 1 and 15. Oh. Now let's add this pair of yeah. factors. 5 plus 3 is 8 and 16. So which is what are the pair of factors? 5 and 3. 5 and 3. Five. Five and three. Thank you. 5 and Five. 3. Equal zero. Then don't say teacher it is three and five. No. I didn't make it a three and make it a five. Yeah. What you have to do now? Yeah. Now you have now is multiplied now is equal or equals zero. So x plus five equals zero or x plus three equals zero. So from here, x plus five equals zero. So x is negative five and x plus three is equals zero. So x is negative three. Is it clear? Yes, teacher. So yes, which teacher. is? Yes, teacher. Which is A?
Now let's solve these equations here now. What are the solutions of each equation? M squared minus 5M minus 14. M squared minus 5M minus 14 equals 0. Let's first, what we have to do, factorize them. Don't forget to factorize them, then use the zero property, F and Z. Let's factorize them the first. I want you now to write the factors of 14. They are, now, they are 7 and 2. But before that, what is the sign of 14? It's negative. Negative. Right? So that means that mean one is positive and one is negative. Oh. So I have now negative 7 plus 2 or positive 7, negative 2 or 14, positive and negative 1 or negative 14 and positive 1. Now let's add this pair of factors to see which one if you add them, you get negative 5. Yeah. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. 7 yes. minus 2 is 5. 13, negative 13. So which pair of factors that if you add them, you get negative 5? Negative 5. Negative 7, seven positive, and positive 2. Seven, negative 7, positive 2. This is the first step. Now, these two factors are equal to zero. I now need to solve them. To solve them, as I told you, you must use the zero property. So, m plus two equals zero, or m Minus 7 equals 0. If m plus 2 equals 0, so, so what is the value of m? Negative, negative, two. Uh, negative 2. Negative 2. Negative and two. if m minus 7 is 0, what is the value of m? 7. Plus 7. 7. So what are the solutions now? 7, negative 2. 7, and negative 2. Seven, Thank negative you. Two. Is it clear? Yes. yes. That's it. If there's a B, factorize the, the equation, then use the zero property. Let's do now B. In B here, we have a B squared plus B minus 20 equals zero. So what you have to do first, you have to factorize them to find the solution. How can you factorize them? Make a table here. Write the factors of 20. But here I have a negative 20. That means one is positive and one is negative. What are the factors of 20? 5 and 4, 2 and 10, 20 and 1. One is positive and one is negative. Positive five. Positive five. Positive five and negative. Positive five, negative four, or negative five, positive four. Let's add them here. Positive five minus four is one. Negative five plus four is negative one. I need positive one. So which is what? Five and negative four. Positive 5 and negative 4. Positive 5 and negative 4. Positive and negative 5, negative 4. Yeah. If you multiply them now, you get what? You get a 0. So one of them is 0. It could be P plus 5, or it could be P minus 4. So here B is negative 5.
and b here. What is the value of b here? Positive four. Positive four. Positive four. Be careful. It is a positive four. Is it clear? Yes, miss. Yes. Okay. yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Let's do now C. In C here, we have 2A squared minus 15A plus 18. What do you have to do? Here, I must factor, I will multiply. Just factor it. Factor 18, it. multiply but, by 2. Yeah, hello here. Look at 18. There's an 18 times 2. So I need now 18 times 2 is what? 30? 36. 36. Exactly. So now I will write now the factors of 36. Here we have 2a squared and plus 18. And this negative 15a, I want now to rewrite them. Since now we have a positive 18, so I must now rewrite them into minus and minus. I mean that I have two factors. If you multiply them, you get negative 15. Negative, yeah. So let's see. Negative 12, negative 3. Or negative 36, negative 1. Or negative 9, negative 4. Which pair of factors? If you add them, you get negative 15. Negative 9, positive 4. Yeah. Negative 9 and positive 4. So here, negative 12. Negative 12 and negative 3. And negative 2. Uh, negative 12 and negative 3. Okay. So now I write them as 2a squared. Minus 12a minus 3a plus 18. If you add negative 12 plus negative 3, you get negative 15. And if you multiply them, you get positive 36. Then after that, as we said before, factorize them like this. Oh, uh, uh, grouping them into two brackets. Then find the GCF. For the first one, we have 2a squared and 12a. 2a squared, what are the factors of it? We have 2a and a. Down, we have 2, 6, and a. The common factors here are what? 2a, is it right? 2a. Yeah. 2a. Yes. So 2, take 2a yes. here as a common factor. Then, if you remove 2a, what you will get? Uh, which is, what will be have? Uh, the, what a will minus be 6. Right a. Will be a. A minus a 6. A minus 6. Thank you. This is for the first one. For the second one now, we have a negative 3a plus 18. Where's the Madame, text? What Now, negative 3a plus 18. I want now from you, if you have every time, if you see the sign of uh, the coefficients of a is negative, put the negative sign outside, then rewrite it now, but without the negative sign. I mean, now change the sign. It will be 3a minus 18. Minus 18, yes. Then after that, from 3a minus 18, take the common factor. Hey, let's write it here, 3a here and 18. You will find that we have 3 times a, 6 times 3. So which is, if you write it now here. That will be 3 two, brackets 
a minus six. Yeah, we have here two a times a minus six minus three times a minus six. Now then, take a minus six as a common factor. What did we have now? If you remove a minus six from here and a minus six. Two a minus three. Two a minus two is three. Is it clear? Yes, teacher, it's clear. Okay. Yes, now it's clear. These known products are equals zero. So what does it mean? That's mean a minus six is zero or two a minus three is zero. One of them is zero. If a minus six is zero, so what is the value of a? Six. Six, six. thank you. And if, if two a minus three is, is zero, what is the value of a? Two over three. Three over two. Three over two. Three over two. Thank you. Three over two. Which is three over two. So the two solutions here for A, that's A. It could be six and A, it could be three over two. Is it clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. 